fascinating piece in the New York Times uh, on March 21st by Tanzina Vega uh, titled, Students See Many Slights as uh, Racial Microaggressions. And uh, it, what, I, you know, I've said many times, I think one of the most unrealized by white people aspects of white privilege is the privilege of never wondering if somebody did something because of your race. Um, not you know, white people just don't generally have the experience of wondering, you know, did that guy just, you know, close that door in my face because of my race? Did he speak roughly to me because of my race? Or was it just that he had a fight with his wife? Uh, did I get this seat in the restaurant? Because, you know, it just by and large doesn't even occur to white people. Whereas people of color are confronted with this constantly. And, and confronted with the question, what happened constantly, and this, you know, I just this is something that I, again I think most people just most white people don't have any idea about this. And this and this article was talking about microaggressions, micro assaults, micro insults, micro invalidations, all the small ways that people of color feel slighted or abused. Whether they're real or not, and in many cases, and probably in most cases, they actually are. And so, I wanted to get on somebody to talk about this who knows more about it than I do. And, and um, Rashad Robinson is with us. He's been on the program before. He's the executive director of Color of Change, colorofchange.org, a, a brilliant, extraordinary organization. And Rashad, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. What are, What are your thoughts on this? You know, I think I think the article really does sort of capture and this conversation that we're seeing, you know, popping up on both sort of universities, you know, in popular media around um, the ways that, that race and perception and implicit bias sort of impact the ways that everyday people live. And sort of, you know, on one hand, we can be as a nation having these sort of conversations about you know, um, about, about being post-racial and about race, race no longer mattering. While on the other hand, we, we see all the ways in which race can be a predetermining factor for so many sort of different um, issues in our society, from criminal justice to education to health disparities. And in the middle of that sits the ways that everyday people live, the, the way that you wake up each day and experience the world and how the world looks at you. And, and for you know, these students who are speaking out on campuses, for folks who, who experience this in the workplace, these are very real issues that are not simply about public policy, but are about the larger ways that we live in this culture. Yeah, and, and this isn't about the old racism of George Wallace. This is, this is um, like uh, Joe Madison says, you know, Jim Crow has become James R. Crow ESQ. You know, it's, 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 gone to a far more subtle level um, in some ways, and, and, and arguably a, 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 perhaps even a more insidious one as a consequence of that. I don't know to what extent you feel comfortable sharing stories from your own life, um, but can you give our, our listeners and viewers some examples of these microaggressions, these um, micro-invalidations, micro-insults, micro-assaults? Well, you know, I think one of the one of the, the issues that that became very prominent in in national news and in and, and, and media over the course of the sev- of the last several years was the stop and frisk policies in New York City. Oh yeah. Um, and and the ways in which black and brown young people each and every day woke up having living in a very different city than their white counterparts. You know, we saw stories of of coaches, football coaches, telling their students. To, to hold to, to, to hold their um, helmets and wear their uniforms home from school so the police would see them as students and maybe leave them alone. Um, students of color. These are not the same experiences, right, that, 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 young, that the same young white kids would have. That, right. that um, these type of day-to-day experiences, the ways in which folks, because of who they are, have to sort of code switch or, or change or... Or, um, or sort of do different things to, to validate their existence and as a result ensure that they're able to move through the world, 
you know, is an impact of race, right? And, 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 you know, there are sort of public policy remedies in terms of how do we sort of monitor those in power, how do we keep data on how, um, you know, folks are impacted by certain policies to make sure there's, there's not disparities. But the day-to-day experience of these young kids in school, these young, these, these, the young kids in New York City who are being stopped and frisked daily, um, you know, is, is sort of these day-to-day microaggressions that sends a very clear message about who you are in the world, what your value is. And, and, that, and that then informs how people grow up and experience the world. And how sometimes, and some of them will internalize that, and it'll, it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Absolutely, it becomes you know it, it is it is it is sort of the, the 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 training ground, the expectations that are sort of set for your future. Yeah, we live up to our the expectations of the people around us or down to them, as the case may be. Um, uh, you know, which is another really really nasty part of this. Um, is the experience? You know, I've I, I've had this conversation uh, you know a number of times with. People my age, uh, Joe Madison is a friend. He's African American talk show host, mm-hmm. and you know we both grew up in a time back in the fifties and sixties when when you know America was very different than it is today in, in terms of racial diversity, racial participation, uh, actual laws. Is the is the experience of of racism as high impact on the young people today as it was on people of Joe and my generation? and think, Or is it just different? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm 35 years old, and, okay. and I, I, grew up, I grew up sort of well after um, the, the civil rights, the, the, the kind of civil rights movement that really had a start and an ending, you know, through through you know Brown v. Board and through the marches, right through the years and, when Joe and I were my, kids. My, my life, my life has been very different and, and really shaped by by those experiences. But to the extent that um, that the the victories uh, on the legal equality front have led a culture and a society to believe that the work is done, mm-hmm. and that. Um, to talk about race, to bring race up, can can make you the racist. To want to have these conversations means that you are sort of um, bringing up something that is passe and and no longer relevant to these days and ages. You know, to the extent that like the 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 problems of of decades ago were in our face and 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 had clear solutions. The the, the problems that we currently face, the the ways in which and um, we still see huge disparities in terms of opportunity and equality and the ways in which people live in this world, but the solutions seem much more murkier. Um, you know, the problems have just changed, and we are, we are living in a world and a time and age where we still very much need um, a broad um, and bold coalition to, to both have these conversations and, and challenge status quo, but also put forward policies that will help us to be able to solve some of these problems long term. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I spot on. I, 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 it seems. I mean, particularly when you look at, I mean, it, 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 black family wealth, for example, is down over the last twenty-five years, whereas white family wealth has gone up. So clearly, you know, where the where the rubber meets the road at the at, at the at the economic level, things have actually gotten worse. So you know, we may not have segregated bathrooms, but um, things are. There's still a long, long way to go. Rashad Robinson, oh, yeah. Executive Director, Color of Change, uh, colorofchange.org is the website. Rashad, thanks so much for dropping by today. Thanks for having me. We'll be back. <laughs>